Welcome to Electron Online and now we're going to talk a little bit more about how to graph parabolas in detail. There's various techniques. We're going to come up with five different ways to, to graph parabolas. But before we do that, we want to get a general feel for what parabolas are, what they look like. Well, here's a general equation. It's a second order equation where the first term has an x squared, the second term has an x to the first power, and the third ter term is simply a constant. Now, this b, that's, those are coefficients, a, b, and c are coefficients, they're just numbers, and b and c could be zero. We simply could have y equals x squared, it's still a parabola. The way parabolas are graphed, they either open upward or they open downward. The vertex, which is either the lowest point on the parabola or the highest point on the parabola, can either be above or below the axis, the x-axis, I should say, specifically. In this case, you can see that the vertex is below the x-axis. Here you can see that it's on the x-axis, and there you can see it's above the x-axis. And the same can happen when it opens downward. It can be above, just touching the x-axis, or be below the x-axis. In these cases, there's only one single point on the graph that actually touches the x-axis, and here the same, only one single point that touches the x-axis. You can see that if it opens upward and the vertex is below the axis, that it will cross the x-axis in two different places. If the vertex is above the x-axis and opens downward, then you can see that, again, it will go across the x-axis in two different places. The places where it crosses the x-axis are usually known as the solution to the parabola, the solution to the quadratic equation. And we're not going to go in details on it here, but it simply means that it usually offers us some, some information about the situation why the equation is used. Sometimes we use that equation in signs, and it would be specific points in a problem that we would be solving and would be interested in. So quite often we're interested in what those points are. Now, when you graph a parabola, you can see that the points where it crosses either the x-axis or the y-axis would be relatively easy to find because that's where we put either the y value equal to zero or the x value equal to zero. For example, the place where it crosses the x-axis, that means y is equal to zero. And the place where it crosses the y-axis, that is where x equals zero in the equation. That's usually the technique that we use to find those particular points. Here again, you can see where it just touches the x-axis, that's where y would be equal to zero. And if we follow the parabola up far enough, eventually, even though it doesn't look like it here on the graph, eventually it will still cross the y-axis somewhere, and we could find that point as well. Here's an example where if we go far low enough, you can see that eventually the parabola will continue on and eventually cross the y-axis. And of course, where it crosses the y-axis, x equals zero. Now sometimes it doesn't cross the x-axis, so there are no what we call real solutions to the quadratic equation, but there are what we call imaginary solutions. So we can still kind of find where the parabola is located. If we take the mirror image of a parabola, let's say the vertex is right over here, just to the right side of the y-axis, and we draw a mirror image of the parabola this way, you can see that the mirror image does cross the x-axis, so these become the imaginary solutions to the quadratic equation, and so therefore we can find those as well. And here, again, if we draw a mirror image from the vertex upward like this, you can see that where the dashed line crosses the x-axis, those would be the imaginary solutions of that particular parabola. So, that's the context in which we're going to use to find ways of graphing parabolas. Parabolas are very common in algebra, they're very common in all kinds of math applications, they're very common in all kinds of science applications. So it's really helpful and important, I think, that you learn how to graph parabolas quickly. And especially without the aid of a calculator, because when you use a calculator, you sometimes lose the information, the understanding, the insight that you get by knowing how to do it manually. Of course, in the end, calculators are very handy and they can do it for you very quickly but at this point it's important we learn how to do this this way all right so stay tuned and watch the next five videos if you're interested about the five ways of how to graph parabolas and that's how we do that